Hey guys, and welcome to the Speech Minute. Today I'm filming a Q&A. I asked on Instagram if you guys had any questions pertaining to the field, and you guys sent them in, and now I'm answering them. Sorry if you guys hear thunder and lightning. It's raining, but this is the only time I could film. Girls are napping. Mom life. I try to answer them in a order of like undergrad, graduate, in the program. Um, but sorry if I don't answer it in that order. What are your undergraduate tips? So my undergraduate, I did not do it in communication science disorders, but that's what I recommend for you to do if you want to get into a good master's program and you want to do it as quickly as possible. So I did my undergraduate in psychology. It had nothing to do with speech pathology. So I decided to be an SLP the last semester of my program after shadowing somebody, an SLP, for three months. So what I recommend that you do as an undergraduate, take it in communication science disorders. Usually those are the prerequisites that you need in order to get to your master's program. What university did you attend and what university do you suggest and why? I chose NOVA because it was the most established university in South Florida. It had a accredited speech pathology program the longest out of the other universities. Um, and it also started a pilot program called Bodwin that was a preschool just for uh, children with ASD, Autism Spectrum Disorder. So that's why I chose um, NOVA. What do you believe is a good GPA to get into grad school and GRE? So NOVA did not require a GRE, so I didn't take it. And a good GPA is 3.7 and above. How long did it take for you to become an SLP? So because I didn't get my undergraduate degree in communication science disorders, it took me longer than usual to get my master's program because I had to do some prerequisites in the master's program. So for me, it took me, I think, three and a half years. After your graduate with your BA, did you have to wait a year and get a certificate before you got into the master's program? No. What some people do is they get a certificate to be an SLPA, a speech language pathology assistant. I didn't do that. I did not um, become an SLPA before an SLP. What advice would you give to someone who is struggling in this major? Just keep going, find yourself a buddy and keep pushing. Drink a lot of coffee, study, study, study. There's if it's what you really want to do, no matter what program you're in, no matter what field you're in, you always have to struggle a little bit. And for me, I look back at graduate school and I feel like that was such a long time ago. So keep moving on, girl. What were the best ways to study for exam? So for me, I am somebody that has to write it out 500 million times. And I would also record myself, like record reading the notes. I would record myself. So I would say the notes, record myself, and just listen to it all the time on the way to class, on my way back home, in the car, all the time. What were the pros and cons of the SLP program slash university you decided to attend? A pro is once it came down to clinicals, our university, Nova, had an in-house clinic. So we had in-house clinic. We were in there. We had our supervisors watching us, monitoring us, and we were providing therapy in-house. So super easy, super convenient. Cons? Um, no, no cons really, to be honest. Any tips on balancing grad school and personal life? For me, it was to be super organized, um, keep a planner, keep track of everything, and have a buddy. I literally had a buddy, <laughs> and me and her would study together, would do everything together, take all the same classes together. And if it wasn't for her, she really, really helped me, and I really helped her. What advice do you give to people who are looking into the SLP field? Do your research, and I highly recommend ASHA.com. ASHA.com gives you tons of information of what it really means to be an SLP and all of the different subcategories that you can do as an SLP. Um, and just read up, ask around, you know, anybody who's an SLP shadow, I highly recommend shadowing somebody. That's what made me fall in love with the field. I kind of had an idea that I wanted to be an SLP or an OT or an ABA because um, some of you might know my brother has autism. So I grew up in that setting, but I didn't know exactly where I wanted to be. So I did an internship, which I highly recommend that you guys do. And that's how I figured out I wanted to be an SLP. How was your CF experience? So it was both good and bad. I did it in two places. 
So my first place, my first job, um, it was a little bit of a factory. Sessions were only 30 minutes um, and it was boom, 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 nonstop. I, it was 8.30 in the morning till seven o'clock at night. I had my first child, so it was really stressful for me and I was coming home very late. So I didn't last there very long. I then found the place that I'm at now, which I absolutely love. To this day, I'm still here and I absolutely love it. And it was a great uh, second part of my CF experience. In what setting do you work? I work in a pediatric private practice. How long did it take for you to find employment after graduation? I hadn't even graduated and I already had my job. So there are tons of jobs out there. You just have to find the right one. Um, there's contracting companies that are always contacting me, schools, districts are always contacting me, and they're always contacting all of my friends that are in the field as well. So there's tons of positions out there. How many patients do you treat a week and what is a typical schedule like in your setting? So for me, I work 30, I work four days a week, 30 hours, and I see between seven and eight patients a day if I do not have any cancellations. Um, what's typical is usually five days a week, seven to eight hours. So 40 hours a week is pretty typical in my field. Worst part about being an SLP, documentation and caregivers slash parents who are uncooperative. Do you ever have to deal with difficult people like parents and how do you handle that? Yes, I have to deal with difficult people. I even have to deal with doctors sometimes where they don't approve therapy and I have to call them and explain why the patient needs therapy. Um, I have to deal with parents. I have to advocate for my patients and make sure that there's carryover and sometimes there isn't. And you just have to roll with the punches. There's only so much that you can do when you try your best and you just don't take anything personal. What are some places you could work as an SLP? So hospital, skilled nursing facility, assisted living facility, school, private practice, outpatient centers, um, home health. Am I missing anything? And then like you owning your own private practice and providing therapy on your own. Do you and your husband run an assisted living home? Yes, we do. Next question, how did you become a bilingual SLP? So I'm bilingual and I'm an SLP, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know how to answer that question. So how did you become a bilingual SLP? I am proficient in both English and Spanish. I put that on my resume. So the setting that I was in, they already knew that I was bilingual. So then they would give me bilingual patients or they would give me Spanish speaking patients or they would give me English speaking patients. Hope you guys enjoyed this Q&A. Thank you so much for watching.